What's going on, everybody? Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Uh, I'm Go Beer, Go Home. And this is the Sunday Brunch Kit Built. Uh, we show up every Sunday and we work on kits. We uh, work on the layout. We'll do some weathering, uh, some graffiti. But this month, this month is a little different. We're doing a group build. We started last week and we are building the Walter's Corner Stone. 130 foot two stall diesel shop so uh there was a couple of us that uh were working away and i've been working away i'm going to show you what i did and uh we'll take a look and we'll get back to work because it's got lots more to do and uh, i think it's back backwards right now back on the stand okay let me just turn that around that's going to bother me now that i now that i see that okay show you in a minute but i wanted to welcome everybody first make sure everybody shows up gets a notification and uh yeah just gonna fix that it's much better when you glue them to the stand but in a case like this where i'm gonna need access to the inside and add lights and all that i don't want to glue it yet but i will be doing some work on the inside today so that's good uh, I want to say a quick hi to everybody who's showing up nice and early. We, we usually start around noon, but I was sitting here and I'm like, mm, might as well start, uh, you know, a little bit earlier, right? Uh, let's see here. So we got uh, Wigwag and Calvin and Mike HO Trains and Eminem Rails and Ethan. How's it going? Uh, let me know when you guys get your stickers. I did mail out stickers last week and, uh, yeah, you should be getting those like any day. I think they went out Monday, either Monday or Tuesday. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it's Monday. Uh, and, uh, yeah, if anybody still wants a sticker and you haven't gotten a sticker, I'm going to put up the, uh, this is my email for GBO, GBO After Dark. Uh, you can always send me an email. Let me know if you want a sticker. I still got lots of stickers left, so I'll send those out. And uh, you can let me know uh, via email what your address is, where I should send it to, and I will send those out uh, early this week. Hey, Heath, how's it going? Thanks for joining us. <laughs> yeah, sometimes finding the the, uh, the workbench is tough if you've got a lot of projects on the go. Um, you know, it happens. I think I have to clean my workspace like once a week just to keep up and maintain. Now, usually... Uh, I, I, I let people join and whatnot on the, uh, the Sunday brunch builds here, but I'm going to give specific um, access just or priority access to those who are joining in on the build. Uh, and you can join if you're working on the same kit, just so that we're all working on the same thing. Uh, hey, hey, Dwight, how's it going? Uh, there's a link for the the video there to uh, to come aboard to join if you would like to join in on the build and if you are working on your kit as well. Uh, yeah, and it's Trackside Mike. <laughs> How's it going? Hopefully everyone's doing good. It's a good weekend. We finally got some sun. So I was out there yesterday working away, doing yard work and whatnot and cleaning, cleaning the garage, you know, after the the winter time, you know, things tend to build up and whatnot. So I'm excited to actually be doing something fun today. So, <laughs> uh, so I'm going to, I'll show you while people are joining there, I'm going to, I'm going to show you what I did last week. Okay, here we go. Okay, so maybe too low, possibly. Possibly too low. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is the kit here, uh, part of it. 
So it's a two stall. You can see there's the two stalls there. And um, I've built the body of it. I painted it black. I used my, uh, what's it called? Chalked brand spray paint on the base. So give it a nice concrete gray color. I also built the little side office here, which I have not painted at all. I wanted to work on the, the main thing, the main structure. I don't even know if I'm gonna use this yet, but it does go up against here, right? Like that, you can basically place where you want it to go. And then the roof. So the roof is typically a solid piece. It's a whoop, one big flat sheet before I throw this across the room. Uh, it's, it's one big flat sheet, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be parking some diesels in here. I want to be able to see inside and whatnot. And so basically what I did was I had a couple of kits that were the Union Station kit from Walther's. And uh, the very center top of that kit, there's, it's like the skylights. So this is technically one roof piece. And I had cut a piece, like a, the center piece off the other one. I put them together and I'm like, that's the exact length of this kit. So I was very happy about that. Uh, and then I patched it together, which I'll show you here because it's, uh, it's holding up very well. You don't have to do too much to it to uh, make this fit. So there you go. There, And then I put a strip along each side there just to make it a little bit wider. But yeah, this is, uh, this is the roof piece here. I have a bit more work to do to it. But yeah, there we go. And it just fits into place there keeps everything to the right size. And then I've got these glass sheets that sit on top here. They, they go up into a point and uh, yeah, very cool. And I didn't have to do too much to customize it. It's that's just how it is. So uh, I'll be working more on this throughout the month. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out so far. Uh, joining us, Already, we've got Trackside Mike. How's it going, Mike? Oh, <laughs> why did I say Trackside Mike? I, I was looking at him in the chat there. It's uh, Perry, Trains by Perry. How's it going, Perry? Not bad, you? I'm good. Thanks for asking. Uh, so you can you, hear You've been working on your kit as well. Yeah, you can hear me already. I wasn't sure because I tested my mic and it didn't. Uh, oh, yeah. Didn't, Love it, uh, okay, that's cool. I just want to check. Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, last week uh, when I finished mine, um, the back wall wasn't on. Uh, yeah. I did put the back wall on and I put this center part on. This. Uh, it's part of the top of the, the actual very top of one of these walls. It's just cut. And um, then I put these beams down the center that are not from this kit, by the way. They're just another kit yep. that I had. So I, I threw them on. And uh, like I say, I put the back wall on. And uh, that's about all, all I have done. Um, I didn't want to get too crazy uh, and have it all. You know, so and but it's like it's all painted and that. So the the windows um, are all in. I modified my windows, as you can see from if you modify if you have a look at yours, um, mm -hmm. they're all cut out. And uh, I sprayed with a three coats of Timia smoke on my window glass, so they're all tinted. And uh, that's about it. And it is, it isn't attached to the base. It's just taped to the base so that I can still take it off and move it around. Oh, well, it looks good so far. And that's a, that's and, a four stall. Yeah. I made two it. Kits and them together. I, I had to, I had to re-engineer it into a, a four stall cause it's not designed to be expanded. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot which of extra is, 
Yeah, so, and even the um, the little building, I'm going to put this little building, I have it just kind of taped together here too, this little, the, your, like, like yours is. Yeah. Um, it's designed to go on the side, right? Yep. So, but I'm, I want to put mine on the back. So it's not designed to go there. So I had to uh, do some cutting of some of these little lugs that are sticking out here that 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 go to, with the walls. Yep. So they would fit tight against the uh, the wall. Well, that's still cool. Yeah, right. it'll be it'll be all right. Uh, I have a question for you about some of these pieces, but before we get into that, I'm going to bring in. Uh, Mike, trackside Mike here, because uh, he oh, cool. is patiently there in the, uh... hey, how's it going? Yep. Got your uh, your fit there with you? I do. I'm going to switch the camera. You want to show us what hey. you've done uh, so far? Good day, Mike. There. How's it going, Perry? Good. I got the track uh, glued in. And I'm going to put the pits in the deck because I'm going to use the pits. Nice. I really wish I could so, use the pits, but might not. Yeah. Fire foam, right? Make it fit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you have the option, right? Like I think, what was it? If you have one inch foam. Uh, or or more, then you're good to cut out uh, the sections to drop it in place, right? Right. Yeah. They're not that big, really. really so. No. Well, looks good. Looks good. I'll probably be uh, adding track to mine today. I found some track that I can use, so I'm going to put that in place. I only have uh, uh, one track. Harry, the tr track, track with the truck on it is glued in, but the rest of them aren't. Uh, is there a reason for that, or you just haven't gotten around to it? Just haven't gotten around to it, yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Now, I'm wondering, I'm, I'm going to go solo layout for a second here, because I want to show you this here, and I'm wondering if yours is the exact same, and maybe Mike's is the uh, exact same, too. Uh, on this sheet here, these are all the little window sections. Um, each of these are an individual window, right? Right. But why is there a big plastic piece in between them? Like that, that needs to be removed, right? Yeah, and that's, it's hard to do, but you need a, um, that's just so that they don't break, I think. Um, what I did was I, uh, well, I, like I, I cut my, all mine out on the sprue there. And then I used a very, very, I didn't cut out the other things. I used a very, very sharp knife with a or a new blade i guess you you could say um you just cut along the edge of the window frame yep. and just do it like very lightly at first and then generally get deeper and deeper as you go and you'll cut right through there and then release it from the rest of the sprue because that's the uh, way i did it and, and i didn't have any problems with mine but like so your suggestion is to score it lightly and then and then really give it and then just clean it up. Yeah, after and, basic. Uh, yeah, that's that's the way I did mine, and I I didn't have any problems with mine. So I I guess that's not generally you know, it's not saying that you're going to be a hundred percent successful, but like if you, I was I just, so. I thought it was weird. I, I, I'm like, well, does it go in like that, and then that's all supposed to be one piece? And then no. I'm like, no, that doesn't seem right. I, that's just for strength like, well, and stability of it. Yeah. Uh, okay. I guess so that they I, don't... I've seen like some of the bigger pieces like that. They do become warped a little bit. So I guess that's how they're engineering them now to avoid that. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. It's very weird. And <laughs> plus, like if you were to just break them out of the sprue, they'd probably break some of the window panel pieces, right? That's true. That's true. Yeah. So uh, we've got a few more people the that showed up. Mike at uh, Putnam Junction, and we've got uh, Anthony and Al Mar. How's it going, guys? If I missed anybody, very sorry, but welcome. 
So Perry, what uh, what are you doing today with yours? Well, I'm going to just turn it around here. I'm going to add some pieces to the back wall, I think. Um, and uh, we'll do that. Sounds good. Uh, now, you, you said that you had made a little piece in, in here where basically it's dead rail, right? And then... Yeah. Well, there, just that. at the very... At the very end of it, I didn't clean my rail. Plus, I my rail that I, the pieces of, of I used code eighty three by the way uh, yep. of rail didn't reach all the way to the end. So I figured, well, I don't want to run a locomotive right to the end anyway. So I'm just going to leave. I'll just drop a little couple of little chunks of rail in there just so it looks all right. And uh, yeah. I'm not going to hook them up or anything. I'm just going to paint them and put them in there and leave it. And that way, if, you know, for some far out reason, the engine wants to take off, it won't maybe go through the end of the shop. <laughs> Hopefully. Well, I, I mean, I Hopefully. don't think anybody would be, well, maybe, maybe Mark, maybe uh, I mean, Rails would go high speed and see what happens. But yeah, um, so speed limit, right? Yeah. So I think I'm going to release it from the base so I can tip it up to do this. It will be easier. Well, Heath, how are you supposed to build it if it's still in the package? What? Oh, I didn't. Heath has a kit, but he uh, he hasn't removed it from the plastic yet. He's he's planning wow. to do one of those, uh, you know, chip in a bottle, but it's going to be a um, a structure in, in a box. Ah, that's an interesting concept. He's got an end scale, right? Yeah, so it's going to be an even smaller box with uh, an even smaller kit. <laughs> See that fits nice. Like that locks the rail in there, and that doesn't move. So like when you add the glue, you don't have to worry about that shifting. That's uh no, that's quite the design that they made there. Yeah, they 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 got the track because I've I used my NMRA gauge and checked the track after I uh, I glued it in, and it's uh, pretty much bang on. Yeah. Mark says it takes him three hours to do an unboxing. So, you know the the, the uh, brick blanks that you get with the, the small building. Um, they're not quite long enough, so you had to you have to to do a whole window. You're supposed to put them in and there's another window piece that goes on top right so i made my own i just cut one of the other ones and uh, added to it so that it blocks out the whole uh window piece hmm. is uh heath coming up uh, i don't know or is he got to do a separate? He might. Uh, he might be working on it from the background. Oh. I've got these uh, these neat markers here. I just I want to do the rail part that's going into the shop before I glue it in place. So I wanted to use the. Uh, it's called uh, Create FX, and you get three in a package. It's by Testers. Uh, you okay. get a rail brown, a tie brown, and a rust color. So I'll probably do the rails in this color, let it dry, and then I'll put it in its place. And it's just a matter of, you know, brought, like a color, bring it on, basically. It's like a marker, a paint marker.
and then all I got to do is clean the top of the rails. Just remember to leave a little bit of your rail sticking out so you can attach. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I've got it. Well, I've got a three three footer here, so uh, I don't want to cut it short. I'm gonna put the whole piece on as it is, and then mm -hmm. from there, I'll just attach it to the layout. Okay. Have you guys seen any uh, new announcements lately that uh, you found to be intriguing? Something that you no, are really I haven't. interested? No, I haven't. I haven't actually, no. It's been a quiet week. Yeah. I actually did see one that I was kind of interested in. Uh, it's kind of an oddball thing for my layout, but Athern announced more of the... Uh, the bi level cars, and uh, they also mm -hmm. announced the uh, what are they, the F 40 something pH uh, locos again. Now, they are American prototypes. Oh, which the is F 59? Okay. Yeah, yeah, with the big rounded nose. Yeah. But they're doing the, um, the new Mexico Rail Runner again which is probably one of my favorites. I, again, very oddball, but I just love the way it looks. So I'm contemplating whether or not to get like a little train, not a big train, but a little train of it just to, just to have, right? Well, that's the one with the, uh, the bird on the side, eh? Because I have one that's non-sound. Uh, I don't think I've ever run it too much. But, oh, you uh, have the... Uh... New Mexico, you yeah. Train no, I got the Athern one. Oh, neat. They released them before, but they didn't have sound. Yeah, I don't know if these ones have sound because the pricing for them was like two hundred dollars. So I don't imagine. Well, you can get it. You can get it with or without now. Oh, they do have the sound ones now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So actually, I may get a sound one. Um, but to, uh, the Mexico, uh, New Mexico rare run, they only ran about two or three cars anyways. Yeah. Cause, uh, you can see them, uh, if you watch the virtual, uh, railroad camera, they come into Benelin all the time. They're the. I just, yeah, they look very, uh, clean looking and it's one of my well, favorite. They're, yeah, the white. It's ones. a <laughs> commuter, commuter rail locals always are clean fairly much because they wash them, I think, at night. Yeah. yeah. Don't have to worry about weathering it. <laughs> Not too much. Little exhaust on the roof, and you're good. Yep. That's not sticking very well.
Hey, Darren, how's it going? So luckily, the water is receding a bit yesterday and today. Oh, good. Good. Actually, I meant to ask you about that. Well, yeah, with all that sun and shine yesterday, it should have dropped quite a bit. Well, no, it hasn't because it's uh, they're still getting quite a bit of runoff from inflows, I think. But... Uh, It's, uh, it is going down a little bit because I'm, but I'm still pumping water from under the house. And for those who don't know what I'm talking about, if you check out my Flickr page, you will see that I am being flooded by the Ottawa River. So how high is it right now? Like uh, ankle, knee, shin. You would need hip waders if you wanted to walk across my front lawn. Really? Yep. It's up. It's, the normal height for it is uh, 74.2 uh, uh, meters, and it is 74.85 or 82 meters the last time I checked there the, today. So that's like three feet. It's up yeah. three feet. Over three feet, actually. Oh, jeez. Well, and that's good. like, that's a lot of water when you consider that from Arnpar to the dam um, upriver, it's, it's about 40 miles. Yep. So that's a lot of water. Yeah, that's good to hear it's going down. Pardon me? Good to hear it's going down. Yeah. It is. We'll see how it does uh, this week. As long as we get too, don't get too much more rain. It's definitely been a wet spring. Oh, yeah. But I was off work all last week, so oh. with it, well, you can't, I got pumps going, so I can't really just up and leave them, because if they quit, then you're, you know, I'll lose my furnace. Yeah. Do you, so um, right now? Do you have a basement? No, it's, it's kind of like a. I don't know what you got, crawl space under there. But, like, the only thing that's down there is it's only about three feet high, and it's dirt. Uh, oh, so blast the, rock? Uh, pardon me? Like blast rock? No, it's just dirt, like a dirt floor. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, like, it's it's concrete block uh, uh wall around the, on a dirt floor but the only thing that's down there is my furnace 
and the uh, the water pump controls the switch for the water pumps and stuff like that but Well, Have you ever seen it that bad before? Yeah, 2019, it was worse. Yeah? Because I had, uh, I, well, 2019, it came up um, to within eight, eight inches of the bottom of my floor joist under there. Yeah. So I had a... Uh, I had two two-inch pumps, gas pumps, pumping water out of the basement continually for 48 hours Oof. on that deal. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. It starts rotting wood and stuff, right, in your house? No. So, but... Uh, there is an end scale version of this kit. Yes. Um, yeah, it was one of the reasons why we picked this kit this time. Because the last time we did this, uh, we we picked a kit that there was only an uh, an HO scale version, and we promised that next time we did this, we would make sure that we picked a kit that uh, was available in both HO and and N, so that no one is uh, left out. Yeah, that way we can involve everyone. Just in right. case uh, Mike wants to switch scales there halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, well, you imagine, if, if Mark was in N scale, imagine the layout he could have though. Oh, huge. Yeah. He could fit all of Toronto in there. Yeah. Or Oh, yeah. Possibilities would be endless. It is. I thought about if you ever, yeah, it's too small. Well, for me, anyways. Me too. I can't see it. Yeah. But you can I run some monster yeah, trains with end scale. Yeah, you could have a huge layout. I don't like how the availability for certain things just aren't there. That's, they're getting yeah, better. They're getting better, yeah. I was just going to say that. But it's still not 100%. Yeah, I agree. Like, if they if they announce stuff in each show scale and N scale at the same time, then it would be a, it would be a lot better for sure. Now, I did you see the announce? Well, it's like a half announcement, but an up close picture of a car, and uh, it, it was Rapido. They didn't make an announcement, but I'm pretty sure they're either going to do the N scale by levels or they're doing more HO road names or numbers or something. All right. Oh, for go go cars? But they haven't fully announced it yet. I don't know if it, it didn't look like a go car. It looked like a Metra or um, Metro Lynx. Because they they're doing the Chicago like super Metro close cars, up, yeah. and it was like, uh, well, it's just is it, a yeah, teaser. Is that what it was? A Chicago Metro? Yeah, yeah. I guess it was. was they're doing, they're doing those. But, they're doing the cars and they're doing the the locomotives. Eh? Yeah. So for those, then they already announced uh, the the. Uh, it's like an F forty, but the nose is weird. Is it is an one? F forty. It's just it's just, it's just different. The the nose the the car body is different. That's all. That's all. It's wrong. Different. Uh, they got a, a different. 
slight nose on them. I kind of, I kind of like those one, those, those Metra F40s with the slope nose. They look kind of sleek, actually. Hmm. It's definitely different. That's for sure. Oh yeah. Heads are in. Perry, are you going to go to the uh, this called uh, the train show next weekend in whatchamacallit? Smith Falls? I think it is. Oh, I didn't even know there was one. Is there one in Smith Falls? Did you yeah, at the museum? Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't, no, I didn't even know about it. So, I, well, I might go. If it's uh, nice out I, and this water is doing and behaving by then, so. It's, it's a win, a win because even if you're seeing it at the, the show, right, it's a museum as well. So you get to yeah. see uh, other stuff. And it'll be, that'll, that'll be my limitation there, whether the water's down and, and everything is copacetic that way, but. Yeah. So. There, I got the windows in the back here now. This is where my my office. Uh, well, basically, what it's going to be is it's going to be a an office and a place where they keep supplies for the shop in there. And you'll be able to access it through a, a door here or a big door here. And it has access doors here too. That will be that. Hey, Brian, how's it going? Thanks for joining. know if you end up going I, I want to go out that way next weekend probably stop at the yard there to see if there's any uh traffic going through oh yeah well, i'll definitely go. that'll be a definite if i go to i'll be over there too somewhere <laughs> can't wait till september yeah september september or august well it's well, september long weekend Well, in uh, August, we're doing the barbecue. Oh. Perry, are you coming to that again? Okay. Oh, yeah. That in August? Oh, if I... Yeah, then, I think uh, that's September. August, uh, Mike. And then September, we're doing... Uh, we're providing to the open house there with manufacturers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Apparently, there's a good list of manufacturers that are doing this here. Yeah, there's some cool uh, manufacturers uh, coming out. The uh, September long weekend, I'm up there for a week in Ottawa. Oh, are you? Yeah. In September? That's cool. Yeah, September long weekend, and then I'm there for the week after. All the kiddies go back to school. Are you oh, up nice. like to work? You're up here working, you mean, or just up for on holiday? We're gonna stay up for holiday. Okay. And then uh, he's gonna come run through the trees. <laughs> run through the trees. Right. Yeah, he's not right. And uh, just found out last week, uh, the youngest daughter is moving to Perth. Well, that's a nice Perth. little town. Yeah. 
CP runs right through there. Yeah. So we'll be up that way a lot more often. That's all right. Yeah, it's about uh, 45 minutes from me. A 45 minute drive. Not too bad. Yeah. I gotta still get this crane to you. This thing's... I'll, I'll pick it up when I'm up there. Yeah, that's probably Whatever the best way. Here. I wouldn't. I wouldn't trust parcel post to take that. Oh heck no! Jeez. Airmail. I think it'd be more like in parcels. Yeah, it'd be in pieces. Yeah. For sure. Flatten out my roof a little bit with the uh, one, two, three blocks. Okay. Did you have much of a flex to that, or was it bad? Well, it was, it was like curled up in the middle. So oh, yeah, right, right, right. Put the blocks on it after last week's show, and then uh, just took them off now. So it's a lot flatter. That's good that it was just an easy fix. Yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, you shouldn't have to fix it. But, like, I understand that, you know, like, the, the, the packaging is not always perfect, right? Yeah, I just think it was such a long piece that they had it on top of all the other packaging. Yeah. And then it caused it to... Uh, all, all the way from China. <laughs> yeah. Starting to smell pretty good in here because I got a lasagna in the oven for later. Ooh. Ooh. Lasagna. Yeah. Okay. I know where we're going. <laughs> about six hours. It'll be all gone by the time you get here, Mike. Oh, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> I always uh, like making lasagna, then I got leftovers for work the next day. Yeah. I don't That's know if I'll be in. <laughs> Pardon me? They'll see what you got for lunch. Be... I said that's enough to make the crew mad because he'll take lasagna for lunch and they'll be looking at their sandwich and looking at his lasagna. And... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Lunch envy. I don't think Mark knew about the train show either. He goes, he's got a thing in the chat there saying train show with a question mark. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure I, I got a notification on my from my phone saying that it was the 13th. So I'm just going to double check. May 13th, train show Smith's Falls. Yeah, yeah, and the next day is Mother's Day too. I think right. Yeah, I think so, but my wife works all, all weekend long, so I'm kind of safe. <laughs> oh, okay.
than the other train shows in what, June? Yeah, June 3rd and 4th, our Empire train show. Yeah. Excited for that. That would be nice. Yeah. I was actually working like on that. Like, last time uh, I went to the... Uh... Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, last time I went to the Smith's Falls one, it wasn't that big, but I'd really just go for, like, you know, to see the uh, the big trains and whatnot, like the actual... Yeah. Because uh, yesterday I was working on... Uh, Brandon has his trailer here. And that's what we that's what we used to load all the modules in to uh, go to the train show from we load it from Ottawa into anyways. Um, I was using it there to move a couple of things and one of the uh, back light, lights wasn't working correctly. So I was uh, I fixed that yesterday for him. And then there were four. Oh no! We managed to get uh, his space clean there, but we also have uh, Heath. Yeah. Hey, Heath, how's it going? Look at this it's guy. Going? I don't know. I don't know how clean <laughs> it going, is, Heath? but <laughs> it's going good. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So I don't know if you guys yeah. are interested, yeah. but I thought I could pull out the N scale kit. And maybe we can make some comparisons, see what uh, might be a little different about them. Well, they should yeah, that'd be, be neat. Same, I would think. Because I have not done anything with mine. No time like the present. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, let's let's go. So, I, I got a box here with uh, some stuff in it. I guess we'll open. Bye. So it, the box does have a bunch of stuff in it, but what I thought, what I have, so this is an Outland Models three stall locomotive shed. This is a Pikes Peak two door kit, and then I got the the two stall. Walther's kit too. This kit is huge though. This box. Yeah. I don't That's know why it's that big. That must be saying something if, if it's an M it's scale. Just, <laughs> it's yeah, just for the for the base. Yeah, the base is the biggest part in the box. Yeah, yeah. the base is pretty big. But I mean the base for N scale is ten and three quarters by six and three quarters. So let's see. Let's see what this shows here. And the box is 14 and three quarters by 10 and an eighth. So it's it's definitely bigger than just the it's bigger than just the base. It's probably a standard size box of some kind for them though, maybe. They just Use it and throw all the parts in it. I don't know. That that's probably very likely. How big was the HO scale box? Does anyone still well, have it to measure it? Yeah, I, I have mine, but I I not I don't have them near me. So, but it, they're they're pretty big too. Yeah. So it's about fourteen inches wide. Okay. Well, well, and twenty inches long. So, so it is 12 bigger. by 20 inch. Yeah. Let's see. This yeah, the box the itself was the box could take me a while. Only bigger than some of the ones that I've had. Yeah, my original plan was to use this pipe, uh, pipe stuff kit. But I wanted more windows, so I bought some more windows to put in it. Um, but this kit is only six inches by three inches, whereas the Walther's kit is, you know, 10 inches long, so it's much bigger. I don't even know if the Walther's kit would fit on my layout. 
Hmm. And this Outland Models looks uh, looks to actually be a knockoff of the Walther's kit, at least a little bit. I guess not really. But oh, I just noticed something. You guys talked about having difference. those clear, the clear diamond shaped things on the top of your roof. The end scale ones don't seem to have that, at least not yes. in this picture. Oh, really? No. Uh, Chris those added were, those um, separate. Those were from the, yeah, it's from the Union Station kit. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Because, yeah, the Outland totally models separate. Have... Like, I keep all my spare pieces from kits. Yeah. But yeah, the Outland models ha has a uh, has something similar to it looks like what you have with these uh, with these little plastic triangles for the roof. Just kind of pop in like that. That's what you're doing with oh, yours, hey. right, Chris? Is this kind of thing? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Just like more, like. I like that because I like that you can see down into it. That, and when you add the lighting on the inside, the whole thing will just glow, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's why I don't like it with these shop kits. They, Walters, all, they all have solid roofs on all their shop kits. You can't see inside them after you get them done. Yeah, I mean, I guess as long as you don't glue the tops mm -hmm. on, you can take them off, but that sort of ruins the the look a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And the strength. And the strength, yeah. My engine house is, is, like, right at the edge of my layout, too. I've been thinking about maybe leaving the front wall off or just, like, cutting a portion of the front wall out so that it's... Uh, you know, so that you can kind of see it. I just realized I don't see any piece of paper in here. Am I missing? Oh, there it is. I thought I was missing the instructions. And we know how valuable Walther's instructions are, so. <laughs> yeah, I've only looked at them a couple times. The other thing that I don't get about Walther's kits, too, is the first thing they always tell you to do is to put the um, put the doors and windows in, which I like to put in last after I've done all the painting and weathering and everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do I do the painting first, yeah. and then I put the windows in. Right. Yep. So I, I kind of think this is the wrong direction, but uh, it does say optional attached mach machine shop. Is that is that an option for HO scale also? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's a little building that goes along the side or wherever you want to put it. Yeah, so somebody was asking about what track they could use with the end scale version, um, and I just saw that it said... The base matches the height of code 80 end scale track. Sections of rail, both sold separately, can be installed in the grooves in the base if desired. If you're powering your tracks, you may wish to drill holes or make other modifications to clear feeder wires. Yeah, the office for this does seem completely separate. There's no like JC doorway or anything. What? Oh, you know, I was just saying hi to Jonathan. Oh. Yeah, there's no the, doorway the door into part the part of one of the uh, the wall frame. You get some. You know, trespassing signs, some decals, no clearance. 
a lot of windows, although they're just the clear plastic. Keith, are, are your window frames like this as well? Like, see how they're, these are all attached like this? Yeah, here they are. Yep. Although mine have these, whatever this is, on the bottom. Yeah, it's weird why they do them that way. Instead of like a whole sheet of windows, they, they it looks like they send you three of exactly the same Three of exactly the same sheets with the uh, these look like the beams for the for the building. Did you, uh, Chris? You said you painted your walls and stuff black. Did you assemble it all first and then paint it, or did you uh, did you paint it? Do like a primer first and then. The uh, the black is a primer, but yeah, I, I normally assemble the outline body first, paint that and whatnot, and then do all the stuff like the uh, the windows and uh, attachment pieces separate and last. Yeah, I, so I I, I definitely do that as do the well. Black, but I'm gonna. The I thought roof. I was going to paint today, but I've got all this other stuff going on here with the uh, painting the rails and stuff. So. Yeah, so can here it is. You can see the grooves for the rails. I think this is the same thing you were showing earlier for yours, so it's, it seems identical pretty much. Yeah. Chris, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. How come you use black primer? Uh, I find that it changes the color that you put over top of it. So it'll give it a darker look opposed to if I did white primer, it would make the color over top brighter, lighter. Okay. And because I want to do a like dark red brick, it'll right. make it look darker. That That's okay. my thought process anyways. I could be totally... But that's what I've no, that's just I was just wondering. That's all. It's like a lot, of, a lot of people you will use gray or that red oxide color. Yeah, I would probably. For well, me isn't like the plaid? Yeah. Not that. Is this it? I thought I had it. He, do you uh, do you do a lot of kits? No, not yet. I mean, I'm I'm still mostly doing electrical stuff. But this company, um, which is a company from Badger, uh, Steinol Res, actually makes a, a red primer that's pre a pretty good yep. match for this plastic. I thought I have it, but I don't. I don't. I'm not finding it, so maybe I don't have it. I think black would look good though to put the red over it for the have like a real dark red brick. Um, the track spacing, at least on the end scale one, is really wide. Did you uh, check out the gauge? Uh, so I don't mean uh, the rail. I, I don't mean. The rails are nine millimeters apart. I mean, from track one to track two. Oh yeah, well they got they got to have room to work on and stuff, right? In between. Yeah, yep. I just I didn't uh, my yard. You know, my tracks on on my layout are not that wide, not even close to that wide. Yeah, they're not even. The width of my engine tracks aren't even wide enough for uh, for this kit. 
It's so funny how cheap this kit is. Yeah, ever, since I've been doing more operations on other people's layouts, I'm very close to <laughs> wanting to tear my layout out, and I'm trying really hard not to uh, not to do it. I think it's a link to have. Like, there's been a lot of times where I'm like, mm, okay, so this is what I would do better. Should I just yep. take it all apart and then do that? Or just, you know, pulled out, you know. Crosses the mind. Yeah, I mean, you, <laughs> I, I'm kind, well, for an actual layout in N scale in my adult life, this is kind of my version one. Um, so there's definitely a lot of mistakes. Or I don't want to say mistakes. Mistakes not there's there's a lot of learning opportunities. Yeah, that's the word I was going to use. More learning. Always something to learn in this hobby. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, there. My original yeah, really plan have to was, be was happy never going to be a layout in here, so. Come on, I thought this was just going to pop together. Perry, you were right. These little plastic things come off pretty pretty easy if you have a sharp enough knife. You just yeah. I just got to go check my pumps. I'll be back in a second. Yep. Thank you for joining. And Mike, how's it going? Waiting on a CN train. Nice. This is so funny, this little kit. <laughs> it's just such a riot. Now you're doing the Walther's one there? Yeah, oh, this is a cheap uh, Outland Models that I got off of uh, eBay. Oh, okay. I was just kind of curious to see the kind of different levels and different pricing on the different kits. How's the pricing, by the way? I know you're, you're probably going to say an American dollar. That's fine, but... I'm just curious, uh, price difference for all the kits there. That is a good question. The Pikes, Pike stuff one I've actually had for a long time. Um, but then, you know, went on to other projects. So I'm not even sure. Uh, let me, let me look a couple of these up though. I can. So. The Walters one was probably about 60 US, I want to say. 50 something, yeah, close. Um, so this Outland Models kit was $17. And if I'm not mistaken, oh, so $18.50 total with shipping. Oh, wow. 
for the Outland models. Let's see, Pike stuff. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm back. Big stuff. Five, four, one. So the Pike stuff kit is oh about eighteen bucks as well. But I ordered some extra windows and stuff for the Pike stuff kit to kind of try and judge it up a little bit. So that cost me a little bit more, and then. Yeah, I think it was like 56 bucks for the Walters kit. I forget who I ended up actually getting it from. Like I, you know, I just looked around and just found the cheapest price. Walters, uh, 933-3266 is the Walters N-Scale kit. And it's uh, $51 at Model Train Stuff. At Train World, it's fifty-two dollars. Now, speaking of model train stuff, did you hear that there's a, uh, somebody trying to scam and 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 say that they are model train stuff and they're really not? Did you see that? I haven't seen it with model train stuff, but I've definitely seen that type of thing. Because wow. they had a big big announcement on Instagram there uh i guess it was a couple of days ago about that do you know what they're asking are they for? the ones like, that are like not necessarily going out of business pardon me chris Uh, is it, who was was it, are they the ones that are not necessarily going out of business, but they're closing their storefront? Uh, this is exact Kyle. Uh, MB Klein's storefront's been is? closed since the start of the pandemic. They, they're only doing uh, mail order now, which is model yeah. train stuff. Is they're online? Yeah, I think a lot of them closed their door doors and went online only. But it's funny though. You, I think now you, if you order something and you're in that area, you can go to the their their warehouse and pick it up. Yeah, a lot of places will do like curbside pickup. Yeah. I don't know. I still, I mean, I don't really have a shop to go to, but I still like the idea of walking into a shop and being able to touch well, stuff. And, yeah, it's kind of nice to look at stuff every now and again, instead of just on your own computer. I think too, you end up spending more if you if you touch it. You yep. end up spending more money than if you're just looking at it. <laughs> well, then you get what you want too. Yeah. You know, I get it home and yeah. go home. It's not kind of what I wanted. It's like going to a train show, and it's like, oh, I didn't know I wanted that, but now that I see it. <laughs> <laughs> Those are called wants and needs. Yeah. You want it, but I don't need it, but I still got it. I'm kind of starting to clear out some of that stuff. Have any of you guys put together any of these Outland model kits? I haven't. Outland models? No, I haven't. Like the stuff, Walters, but I have not. I haven't done any of those. Yeah, the only stuff I've really put like together from here are these little, uh, like dock, little things. The three D printing's not great on their stuff. But like for little filler pieces, like I'm, I'm trying to get all the little, I don't know what this is called, but the little strings out of this thing right now. And 
they're they're not coming out. Is it flat? What? Is it's it flash the, the, or what they refer to as flash? I guess so. It's all the little three D printing strings. Uh, I haven't really done too many three D kits at all. Uh, the only thing I got, I got a uh, SD sixty E cab for a Northwick Southern locomotive. But by the time I got going and putting it by putting it on, Atherin announced that they were doing them, so I kind of <laughs> yeah forgot about it. But it was pretty rough. I found like it was going to take a lot of sanding and and work to make it to make it good look good look good. So. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know why I'm still fighting with this thing. I, this is not going to go on my layout at this point. I just sort of yeah, wanted it as a comparison it's piece. It. They're, they're great. Can you use any parts out of that kit to kit bash? Are you talking to me, Mike? Yeah. Okay. No, it's not. The, none of these parts are, I don't think, really worth using for anything necessarily. Uh, maybe a like a background flat or something, or just like a like I'm looking at this wall. Like this wall could be used probably as a background flat somewhere, but you can see all the printing marks and everything all over it. So, like Perry was saying, it would take a lot of sanding and stuff to to make it look nice. Because exactly. especially in end scale, those printing lines just don't, you know, they don't, they're not to scale. Yeah, I guess so. Three M uh, grip tape really works good. Well, that's what you use for your roof, Mike. Is that Are you doing stuff the, roof? the same stuff? Yeah, I'm just cutting out where all the uh, air vents and stuff go. But it's kind of a pain because that glue has really stuck the roof down. The grip tape. Of course, I never get it cut 100%, but... I want to see Mike go into a skate shop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, me into a skateboard shop? Is that... That's uh, just grip yeah, tape, Mike? I just want to see you go in and be like, hey, far out, man. <laughs> yeah, Heath, that's just grip tape. Yeah, I did that. I actually like that look, too. I, I did it on this building, which is a uh, background... The Walter's background park view apartments and that's yeah. what's up here is the same kind of thing as that just grip tape makes it pop out eh? gives, gives it, it a little right texture back. yeah Uh, Heath is doing the N scale and we're all doing HO. But like Heath is like seven kits and we're just doing the one. <laughs> Heath is busy today. He's got a few kits there. Yeah. Uh, I... Oh. Go ahead. Well, I was just saying the pipes and stuff. I don't, I don't mind those kits. I just find they're hard to cut sometimes, even with a brand new blade. Yeah, I guess that's the other thing too. Is like both that's of these sick. kits, I, I feel like look like the the kit that they are. So it's like how to make them look different. You know, like the Pike stuff, blue and white, always looks like a Pike stuff kit. Yeah, and I got a few of the pikes and stuff kits that I've done. 
just when you're cutting out the doorways and stuff, it's like, wow. She's a little tough. That's when you get the Dremel out, Mike. Yeah, no doubt. Coming up for September. Mike, are you you're going you're coming to uh, Colorado, yeah? I'm still working on it. Oh, okay. And September is the OVR event? Yeah. Pop-up event. Uh, mini prints. A couple other manufacturers. How long have you been working for OVR, Mike? <laughs> I, no, I just go down there all the time. Oh. I just help out when needed. Oh, I thought you actually worked for Lauren. No. No. Just a shop by shop. Huh? Just a really good customer. Yeah. yeah. Well, because I, I met you in person when you were, yeah, you know, working the yeah. booth for Lauren. So I, I don't know. Yeah, he asked me to go down, and I said, sure, I'll go. We're going uh, next year, too. He. Oh, are you going? Yeah. It's such we're a good show. Out. It is a good show. Chris is going to go. Chris is going. Yeah. Is yes, there. What? <laughs> yeah I didn't realize it was only six hours for me I thought it was 12 or more I didn't really I, I was thinking about a different show and uh well that in between between that and trying to get time off my job is not great with that so but yeah I'll make it work uh next January oh fantastic no oh, Heath you're not far from there right Two and a half hours. Yeah, you just take the train up. Um, that's what I've been doing is just taking the Amtrak up because it 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 stops very close to uh where the hotel and stuff are. So I can just take the train up and then walk and or take the show shuttle from that point. Well, that's cool. Yeah, that's not bad at all. I was, I was pretty impressed with the uh, train traffic that's even around the show. Yeah. It's it's something else. I can see it in person. Uh, pretty phenomenal, really. Four buildings, full. Yeah. That's a lot of trains. Oh, yeah. My first trip up there, I was like, oh, I'll just, you know, we'll just drive up in the morning, walk around for a little bit, and then head home. Uh, that was a mistake. I don't know. Even a two and a half hour drive, you know, so whatever, five hour total, it was still too much to do in one day. 
There's just so much to see. Yeah, I can well imagine. And so many people to talk to, I guess, as well. That's the other part of it is it's such a social uh, experience. Yeah, there's a lot of people. I think 23,000 in one day. Yeah, I think they said between the vendors and the um, the exhibitors. Sorry, the, the vendors and exhibitors. The the people that came to the show and the exhibitors that, that it was that that many people. That's just the – is that the attendance? Yeah. Yeah. Well, wow. it, that's the attendance for the – you know, the people that paid for the tickets and the amount of, uh, what are those things, The like the lanyards they hand out for the vendors. Okay. Yes, that is a lot of people. Yeah. That's where they bring out all the new stuff, right? What's coming out for the year, what's coming down the line. Um, there's a lot of that there, yeah. OVR announced some stuff. Yep. Mike was yeah. very good at giving the pitch. <laughs> the gondolas and the uh, bike cart. They'll be coming out soon. Multiple pipe cars. Uh, June with the six. June, thousands. yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. That's what I can't wait for is the six thousands and the pipe car. And there's a lot of locomotives coming out this year, too. Ouch. Yeah. Repito uh, GP9 with the slug. Ouch, my wallet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The uh, Challenger, or Charger, I mean, Siemens Charger by Bachman. That's, yeah, that's, I think that's September, right? I'm hoping like December. <laughs> oh, July, August. Oh, really? July, August. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I, I, they, they said it was like summer, late summer. So I think either third quarter, possibly third quarter. E second either way, it's going to hurt the wall. Chris, yeah. I don't know why you Between even bother using a wallet. The uh, Intermountain. You... <laughs> yeah, just the uh, my my paychecks directly deposit into OVR's uh, OVR's so. account. Yeah. <laughs> L Lauren cashes yeah. all your checks for you. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> feels that way. Feels that way. Yeah. I thought it was funny when the uh, the Aces come out last year. The 70 Aces. The G, uh, CP ones. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, they were nice. Called me, hey, uh, Reed, someone get one of these? I'm like, uh, well, CP, I don't really model CP. Then I looked at them, I'm like, okay, I'll take two. <laughs> Talked you into it. Yeah, Just like there are that. certain things that are too nice to pack. It's like he put hidden messages in the phone. I'm kicking yeah. myself for not getting those military ones. Oh, well, yeah. you're, you're, you're still not too late, Chris. Actually, uh, actually well, apparently they're going to rerun the, the first two again, but with. Uh, oh. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, you, you're actually better not to have gotten them because now they're going to have roller-bearing trucks. So everybody that bought the other ones is going to try and get, you know, rebuy them. Well, some people will probably anyways. I don't know if everybody uh, will. Wow. The people that care. Yeah. I'm looking, I'm looking for a 70, uh, 20. They haven't come up with that one yet, right? 
Yeah, I am not Which, prototypical enough that I would I would rebuy something if they went from friction bearings to roller bearings. No. It's it's such a small thing that like is it necessary? Like well, no, it's not necessary, but it's, it's still cool. Probably. <laughs> I mean, if, if if people are prototypical modelers, no, like uh, you know, more power to them. It's just not it's not my style. That's all. If it's something that you can actually see visibly, and you know. Look cool, then sure. Like uh, caps are blue because you can actually see them rotating. But if it's just a black cap, it's really hard to see. They're going too fast, anyways, on the layout. Yeah. Well, after you weather them and uh, accentuate them a bit, you you can see them rotate. Yeah. Can you? Yeah. Do you think that's going to become more of a, a standard as far as when oh, yeah. uh, a lot of these high-end companies start making more cars and locos? It's already become a standard. Yeah, I think they have pushed it that way. It's almost like if you don't have them, they sit on the shelf. Yeah. Right? Well, that's, that's hard to do to put them on your shelf. I think HO no. scale modelers are much more, um, they pay a lot more attention to things like the wheel sets and stuff than end scale modelers. I mean, Maybe we I'm can't see them anyway, so. Well, that's true, too, yeah. Who know? Who knew tiring the roof would take so long? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, this will be a quick filler. I'll do this quick. Get on to the next part. I'm still cutting out the uh, vents. Yeah, it's the the quick details that take the longest. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when it's a heavy two-sided glue tape. I'll have to go and get more of that grip tape out. My last building there. I'll next get the roof done. That's where my little building is going to go right up back here, just like that, sort of. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah. Is that off to the side? The only thing, it's not designed to go back here, so. Because yeah. it's got the little, uh, on the roof there, it's got the little, these little cutouts for these, these here, eh? But they don't match when you put them on the back. There. Oh. So, I think I'm just going to cut off this long part here. I'll just put a ruler along here and just make it total flat. And it'll, it'll be either that or elongate them. I'm not sure quite. Making lunch. Who's making lunch? I don't know. I'm just reading the chat there. Oh, let's see. Split Rock. Hey, Split Rock. He was asking what he was making, and uh, 
Oh, and someone said lunch. And then Mark said Mark that he's making make a lunch. lunch. <laughs> make a lunch, yeah. The, the guy with M and M's in his name shouldn't be talking about eating. No. Melts in your hand, not in your mouth. I'm making a very poor version of what uh, everyone else is making because I thought this would only take me a couple seconds to make and it's taking much longer than than that. What, Nothing. Mark? You got a food fascination, Mark? <laughs> There's nothing in this hobby that's a couple seconds. No. Okay. Oh, I'm sure this wouldn't take long. Yeah. Like, no, you're like two hours, three hours later. One of my big problems is work seems to get in the way a lot of times. Oh, yeah. Work and uh, everything else, right? If I could find a way yep. for work to just pay me just to show up, but I could actually work on my trains the whole day, it'd be a much better uh, job. Yeah, I don't think my work would go for that. No, no. The all-time dream. Mark just said, every time Thomas joins a chat, I have a craving for a banana split and Coke on the rocks. I get the banana split part. I'm not sure I get the Coke on the rocks part. Uh, a banana split, eh? Yeah, I haven't been to the Dairy Queen yet this year. It's one of the things I usually get at some point in time during the summer. Is it actually summer for you guys yet? Uh, Today's like well, one of our first warm days in a long time. <laughs> it's not actually summer, no. It's, we're still technically spring. It doesn't become summer till yeah. June 21st, but... We've had a cold spring too. So. It's been up and down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For like two weeks. It felt like two weeks. Yeah, I know that. Like, I think this week it warms up. Well, there's uh, some kind of a storm. I was looking there today. There's some Yesterday kind of a storm went. coming over up. Upper Michigan right now, so it, I don't know if it's going to rain some more later on or what it's going to do. Upper Michigan last week got two feet of snow. Yeah, I know. That's just nuts. Yeah. Well, they can keep it. Well, that would that was part of that low that was spinning that gave us all the rain. Yeah. He said summer doesn't start until July 5th. July 10th. 5th. Oh, right. Kind of like There's Groundhog Day, but instead no, of us looking July for 4th. a groundhog, it's uh, normally when uh, it's whenever Eminem rolls out the uh, short shorts. Kind of like after Independence Day, right? Thomas just said, what's the best time of year to visit Toronto? Best time of year. Depends on what you want to see. Yeah. I'd say... July, August, probably. Yeah. T 
Tisch. M&M Rails is going to produce one video a week through the summer. Should we, should we hold our breath? You think it's going to happen? Live. I'm thinking. I'm thinking not. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. <laughs> I want to say, did he say that before? I think so. Yeah. I I, re I vaguely remember that. Yeah, that's why I'm like. Didn't he tell us that last year? But I I can't remember. No. I can see him doing a new short once a week. Well, yeah. But a full length of video. Hmm. <laughs> tough love, way, Mark. Tough love. Like a new layout. Either way, we're happy to see it when it does come out. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Chris, did you just say you're building a new layout? <laughs> no, I said maybe if Mark was building a new level, oh, you Mark. see you. Mark's building that second level, isn't he? Too much yeah. already. I can't turn back now. I thought Mark's gonna, like, gonna cut into the uh, cut into the hallway, right, and build that little runaround. Yeah, or go out to the living room. Right. I'm still well, waiting for him to move can... down the street for me. <laughs> yeah. That's about all I can do today. I gotta get some stuff for my roof. Uh, I'm gonna get some clear, clear plastic for my roof. I meant to do that this week, but with all the stuff going on, I didn't have time, so... Perry, what, what area do you live in that you're so dealing you doing with it like uh, a, water? A solid... uh, I live on the Ottawa River, uh, okay. west of Ottawa. I don't know if you know where Ottawa is, but it's I'm I'm well west of Ottawa right now. So, uh, but I, I, mean, I, I live Ottawa right north of me. Yeah, I I live right beside the river. So okay. But it's supposed to be uh, like 750 feet away from me, and right now it's about 25 feet away from me. <laughs> Ouch. And, Yikes. Yeah, and I have like water under under the house that I'm pumping out, so. Yeah. It's a drag. Didn't used to be like this, but uh, it's, uh, I'm not real sure why it's like this but we, they, they amalgamated all the controls for all the dams into toronto and they're trying to do it via computer and they're not having much luck i don't think because they don't know what they're doing because there's like years and years and years we've had more lots more snow than what we have had and nobody ever got flooded and so far we've had you know, since 2017, we've had three floods. Oof. So. Oof. But they they won't take responsibility for it either. So, you know, they can just do what they want. If this will fit on here or not. It might. For a minute. There. Yeah, that one's going to fall in. Mark, you should do a day in the, the style of TV's crib. Uh, I think people would enjoy that. Just to see all the caper you get up into. Yeah, that'd be something. Hmm. 
It's funny how the um, my I just noticed in my building when I look at on the on the camera, it looks a lot lighter than what it actually is. The paint color, yeah, yeah, yeah. It does it's, look it's, very it's, uh, tan on the camera. Yeah, it's it's not. It's um, that is uh, like a what do they call it? It's to me a paint. It's um, to me a tan. Uh, no, it's not tan. It's 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 real or not? Um, well, let me get the can. Hang on. Yeah, they call it red brown. It's uh, to me, a mm. TS one on on the top of the can. Yeah, it definitely looks pretty tan on the on the video. That's what it's. Uh, yes, yeah, that's the can there. So, do any of you guys use like this kind of stuff, the like magnets or the tray or any of this kind of stuff when you're putting stuff together? Yeah, I use the magnets. They work good. Gives you that extra set of hands, right? Yeah. Yeah, wood. Especially if you want to move on to something else and uh, keep building. So I'm trying to find a way to kind of hold this roof in place. To let the glue set a little bit. Now is that that's the other kit there, isn't it? Yeah, this is the cheap outland models thing. I'm just trying to try now, to throw that, it together. Will that kit go like can you kit kit bash that into the Walters one or is it a different size? Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Something tells me it'll just end up in the trash or I'll like, I'll, I'll use it to try maybe my uh, painting that I want to do on the one that I'm going to actually keep. Right. Kind of thing. So I think it'll be more the, uh, the trial and error version. But that, uh, he's asking me if he should eat a whole cake live on his stream next week. Who is I, asking, I think Mark? Full, but I can't do... Mark, Mark's going to eat a whole cake live. But A whole cake? I think he should choose a cake that he doesn't Yeah. We have to see what some kind of humility. Cake? What kind of a cake? So like, a, a, like a round, an eight inch... Suffered. Like an eight-inch round cake, double decker or single level or what? like, there's lots of cakes. Hmm. He's gonna eat a cake and not share it. Oh boy! He's gonna eat oh a boy. cake from the uh, Easy Bake Oven. <laughs> <laughs> In one gulp. Ooh. As he runs to the cupboard and dusts off that little box that says Easy Bake Oven on it. Yep. Yeah. He's like, it's time, by, I, guys. <laughs> I remember doing that with my sister when I was a kid, making Easy Bake Oven cakes. That was good. Yeah, uh, with a light bulb. Brilliant idea. I mean, have, you know, um, basically use a light bulb to provide enough heat to cook something inside a plastic box right i mean like exactly how... yeah well, the inside stuff. of inside of the plastic box was all lined with metal though. 
I remember correctly. <laughs> you can have your cake and eat it. You too. remember uh, creepy crawlers as well? They make the uh, the rubber insects or whatever they're called. Uh, they were, oh, I think I remember seeing those. Yeah. Food, but... I didn't know you could eat those. You eat those? Uh, I don't I remember think what's edible, clear is uh, that Chris eats them. I don't know I that you're just like uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's where I went wrong. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that's where you went wrong, Chris. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So now, now I've got the Walters kit out, and I'm going to see about putting the four walls together. Oops. To be fair, it was Mark that actually ate ballast to see if it was at a good texture or not. Just saying. Well, that, yeah, that's true too. That was a, that was actually a good trick. Good trick that was. A little gritty, eh? Yeah. Are you saying it's like walnut or something? Ground up walnut? <laughs> no, it was ground up Orioles. Wasn't uh, it? What, I, I guess my question is what brand uh, was it? Because I think I would assume different brands probably taste different. Yeah, I would think so. Are you opening up a can of worms, sir? <laughs> He's going to have a new one. Oh, the trick now is getting fine ballast. Ah, oh, fine. There you go. So that, that, would, that would be a stream worth watching. Is Mark trying <laughs> different brands of uh, ballast for taste? <laughs> right. We, we better be careful with what we say. He might actually do it. Yeah. Mm, I highly doubt it. Are you sure it's so that impressionable? Yeah. yeah. He even said, don't encourage me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't encourage me. <laughs> Mark the point. It's like truth or dare. You dare me to? We did the same thing yeah. to Mike, and that's why he put a hole in the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, is that how that got going? I, I think That's I missed that. Going. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And there's James. Actually, because he kept telling me he to put a hole in the wall, pass it off because I'm like, <laughs> well, I told you I come down and help you in the summer. That's not a problem. I'll bring the whole song in there. <laughs> Yeah, it wouldn't be a very big hard fix if you ever moved out, Chris. Like, you just have to... That's what I said. You know, you just put a piece of drywall in there and patch it up and away you go. It's done. Nobody nobody even noticed the difference. No. I thought Chris said that number five was going to be the last layout he ever built. Well? Uh, no. Well, I mean, you know, you, you want it to be, and then, you know, they're still growing, right? So I'm sure they'll be at least. That's why I think if you go into, the, into that storage room there where you are, have a nice little uh, yard. Yeah. Or or Wouldn't staging. Sta yeah, staging a staging yard in there. Yeah. You wouldn't have to put. You have to. You wouldn't have to take your trains on and off. Enough room. That's right. No, you could do that too. Never enough room for staging. Yeah. No. No. Two games there. Yep. 
Did you guys wash your uh, pieces before you put them together? I didn't. Though I read it after, so I thought, oh well. But everything seemed to work out fine, so. Yeah, I didn't either. What is, what is the purpose of washing them? To when get all the, the these, oil. Yeah, go ahead, Perry. Yeah, to get all the oils off it. Yeah, wash it after you build it. Hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, the point is to wash it before you, like, put glue and stuff on it to get the oils off so you're gluing, you know, without any any film on it. Because they need to use, like, mold release and stuff, right, when they're making these for the injection yeah. molding? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the plastic could have a now, little bit of oil on it. And... Pardon me? Why wouldn't they just do that at the factory? It's just a quick dip in, uh, you know, in the yeah. water. Uh, money? That, that would be another step and cost money. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to say that. Would that cost you extra yeah. to do that one wash? Oh, it doesn't really, like, when when you're touching the plastic, you don't really see that film or anything on there. That's why I never really thought it was, uh, you know, much of a concern. But if it if it I actually don't... affects how the overall look is going to be, then is it worth it? I don't think it's that big of a concern, long as you never have a problem. But, like, if, if you paint with a, you know... Uh, paint it and you get like little fish eyes all over the paint then then it's going to be a problem because that's the oil reacting with the paint hmm. i generally forget to wash my stuff but you know now if i'm doing a, a locomotive or something i will yeah. wash it Before That's I, why I wear gloves I, so I don't get oils on them. Yeah. The fingerprints, right? I guess also, like, I'm I'm filing off all the little nubs and stuff. So I'll have little pieces of plastic on everything. So I, I guess I'd, I'd wash them to get that off as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll come off the sprue and then I file them. So yeah. You know, I have a little pieces showing. Chris, how many days do you usually stream for on Sundays? How many? I, miss, I half missed that question. How uh, how, how many long somethings do you on go? Sunday? No, uh, do, do you go for like two hours, three two hours? Two hours normally. Ten hours. I usually twenty-five hours from noon until. Two. Yeah, usually the two hours. One of those. Yeah. Mine was all painted first, Mark. Then I put it together. Yeah. Harry had a head start. Yeah, I kind of. Yeah, I started before. So. But Perry, you, you painted yours. Somebody else didn't paint it, right? I mean, you didn't like buy it from somebody, and they had already started it. No, 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 no. These were brand new in the box kits. Yeah. 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 So that's not cheating. No. Well, I, I just, I started a little bit earlier than everybody just because I was, I was building a bigger kit and I was trying to engineer putting them together that they're not designed for that. So, yeah. 
Yeah. I was trying to hey, figure all that out all, all at the same time. So. You bought two kits, right? Or three kits? Two. Yeah. Yeah. Will you guys be putting any signage on your building? Yeah, I've thought of that. I'm not really yeah. sure what I sh what kind of signage I should put on. If I should put on like body shop, or if I should put paint shop on it, or what I should put on it. Because that's that's what this one is going to be. Is your paint shop or your body shop? Yeah, not so much your I'm, in the facility. No, I already have two other buildings that are locomotive um, rebuild shops. So this is going to be the, the body shop part of that complex that I, where the uh, truck is sitting is I'm going to build scratch and build a paint, sh a paint booth in there and put it in there. So it'll be like a building inside of a building. Yep. So that's yeah, what that's going to be. Yeah. That's the next thing I'm going to start building or just start working on. I kind of drew out some plans the scale on a, a piece of paper, but you know, I think it's, uh, I just got to figure out how to cut out all the, uh, all the holes for all the lights. I have, I have the plastic. I got 0 0.040 plastic for the walls and stuff. That is one thing about this kit in particular is because it comes with a floor that you put track in. Yeah, there aren't really any holes to run wires and stuff up into it. You got to kind of figure no. that out, I guess. Well, I guess you're supposed to put the wires just out front or something, and put it like kind of under when you connect the the uh, track to the for the, the shop to your other track. It should power it, right? I think that's oh uh, yeah, I, there. I'm talking about for things like uh, lighting. Oh, for lighting, yeah. Oh. Mark says we're all building them and then painting them after. Yeah, that's quite possible. Well, I'm mm -hmm. I, I'm going to put together like what Chris did. I'm going to put together the the walls. Yeah. But before I put any doors or anything in, I'll paint the walls yeah. and the doors and everything. Um, but I do to some extent. I think it's easier to glue the walls together to get that good glue joint in the corners before painting them. Yes. Uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, where's the windows? I'm not as worried about the glue joints. Should probably put this. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out a way to put these next to each other to kind of see the size difference, but. I've got the track in the way. Now we'll probably wrap things up around uh, and uh, we'll continue on next fourth and until basically done. We've got a whole the whole month to kind of you know work away with this. I figured that it would take you know. To, for everyone to you know get to that point and yell the fish and whatnot. Uh, so that being said, because there's like five minutes left there, six minutes. Um, if you guys want to mention anything, um, you know, any lives or videos that are coming out, uh, just thing there and let everybody know what's going on. Sure. Got some rail fan videos coming out, and tomorrow night we're on James James's channel, Dundas Chuck and Model Railroad Junior. No, he's senior, sir. He's se he is senior. Yeah, he's he's told me that he you are junior because yes. he's he's Junction senior and you're Junction junior. So yeah, it's tomorrow.
I have nothing new coming out. Uh, and he's here because Tuesday, I'm... right? Yeah, I'm Tuesday. Who's uh, this Thursday? Evan M. It's me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it's Don't me this week. Yeah. Nice. What well, do you got? We're live here? next Saturday from. Oh yeah, from the train show. Well, I, I don't have a plan yet. I'm sure I'll come up. Yeah, plans yeah, are probably, overrated. Uh, do a walk around and then show the. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's all oh. it, I guess. Nice. But... It depends. Like random lines like that, you know, can't really plan. You just do. So here you can kind of see the size difference between these two. This is the. This is the. Um, this is the three track. Outland models, and this is the two track Walthers. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, oops, they're underneath my huh. my big head. So, three track Walthers on the bottom, Outland models. Sorry, Outland models, three track on the top, two track Walthers on the bottom. I'll get it right eventually. <laughs> Definitely a size difference. Yeah. A lot longer, eh? The Walters? A lot longer. Well, and a lot wider, too, because the Walters is only two tracks and the Outland's three. But e even the three track of the Outland is too too big for the three tracks I have currently laid out for my, uh, my engine area. I can relay them, though, probably to line up a little better. Right. I just have too many tracks on my layout. Uh, never enough. So you don't know where they're going yet, or you do know? Or... Oh, I have no idea where I'm putting these. I, I'm kind of the honestly. I'm I'm just making it because I thought it was fun that you were doing a build along. <laughs> cool. Yeah, we like yeah, that. They, idea. they may not ever end up <laughs> on right. any of my layout. There we go. Now it's holding together. Well, it's definitely fun having all of you guys, uh, you know, build along and get to talk and share the hobby. It's what we do. It's our thing here. So, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> the size difference is just wacky. Wow. Yeah. Probably tilt them on the side too. Look, this the the Walters one's also significantly uh, taller. Oh, is it ever? Yeah, this dimension here. Nice sweater. Oh, we've got GBO sweater. Is that something new? Uh huh. Uh, yeah, well, I, I had to order a couple of samples just to see, you know, how they are. Uh, it has the new logo on the back. I can't turn around right now, otherwise it's going to go flying. But yeah, they all say GVO. And uh, I'll eventually make some available that say GVO crew underneath. So for the nice. anybody who wants a GVO crew uh, shirt or hoodie, then yeah, they'll be available. I know somebody walks swag. in swag. Yeah. <laughs> swag, yeah. Okay. I know somebody walked in the store with one on and uh, almost got mugged. What? Yeah, I was at Who? OVR and I had uh, 
I had that Chris's sweater on there. Oh, no. I got off the merch store, and the girls are like, "Hey, where's ours?" And I'm like, uh, <laughs> on, "On his homepage." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then Chris is like, "They um, I don't know if you know, but uh, the last uh, OVR sent me, there was like a little post-it note included, and basically, it had all the sizes of what they." What they want, they're like, yeah, I want this one and this one. And this. Oh, That's God. funny. Yeah. Okay, well. They're all like, hey, where's ours? I should bring those down at some point, but yeah. Well, yeah, was funny. guys, um, oh, yeah. yeah, we'll switch the cameras. We'll wrap it up for today, and we'll uh, reconvene next week. I don't know if you guys are going to be available, because it's Mother's Day next Sunday, but what was that next week? I'll be here yeah. either way. Uh, I should be right. around somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I can probably make it. Yeah, I'm gonna try and be around as well because I'm I'm gone uh, the the week after that because that's the Greeley weekend. But I'll try and be around next week. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! The meet and greet. All right. Well, yeah, we'll just uh, we'll reconvene and we'll we'll hang out and. We'll see what's going on at that point, and we'll get these things built, and uh, hopefully by the end of the month. I don't know how long it'll take you guys. It already looks like you're done. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just got but, I got to uh, do the roof on mine, yeah. So, yeah. but I got to so get fun, some man. I got to get some plastic for that. So, um, maybe next week I'll try and set up. Uh, my module so that you can see where this is actually going to go with the other shop beside it. Nice. So. Hey, yeah, that'll be cool. I've, I've seen that. Cause it, it's looks, a, it looks cool the way you have them all in a row like that. So. Yeah, because it's a nine bay shop. So. Oh, wait. You took two two bay shops and you ended up with a nine bay shop? No, this is uh, this is the paint shop. It's it, it's two. It's a four bay, two two bays, plus plus I have a nine bay shop that I've already built. Uh, oh, okay, gotcha. Sorry, I was He's putting it all together. And this is going to go on the end of it. Ah, so like one connected into the other? Not really. No, this will be kind of a separate building, but okay. beside it. Nice. Sort of a. It's kind of going to be like a after built like you know built after yeah that's why i'm i'm doing the windows more modern with their bigger windows and stuff so with the transfer table nice. with the transfer table yeah that's the next thing i gotta try and figure out oh that's cool transfer tables are yeah yeah all right well uh, to everybody here today, Trains by Perry, thanks for jumping on. And everybody right. in the chat, thanks for joining us here today. We'll see you all next week. Thanks, Chris. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, guys.